I think one interesting thing is that the co-ops in this group are really different in really different situations, different sizes, sort of different priorities probably. And so I think as a general manager, a big question is, is how do you do what Jackie did? How do you frame up that big goal? You know, how do you find the intersection between sort of the inspirational thing with something we can actually do? And it's anywhere from, you know, we think our co-op needs to move to a better facility because we're just so handicapped here. Or it could be like Jackie, we're going to change the economic system of the Southern Appalachians. You know, it's just like, it's so great. So how do I know that as a man? Like, how do I know which one to, to choose? And I think that's a process. And, and with the board, the board's typically given us some fabulous ends. And those fabulous ends give you permission to do great stuff, but they really don't help that much in sort of prioritizing those things. And one of the things I try and do is I try and see that as like the interpretation part of the conversation with the board. So I'm, I'm framing something up and I'm bringing it back. And I'm asking, you know, how, does this, how does this resonate with what you were thinking? And I particularly try and say, if I'm off base, please tell me today, because I want to stop working on that. I want to start working on something that's going to gonna bear fruit. And so that kind of helps with sort of checking it with, is it sort of the right kind of aspirational goal for the co-op? And then if it's a practicality test, it's probably a different group of people. So we might be framing up with other people in this group, other co-ops. It might be with NCG. It might be CDS. You know, I'm saying this out loud to you, Mark. What do you think? And, and Mark's <laughs> going to tell me somebody else did that, or he's going to say, have you thought about looking at it this way, which is always fabulous feedback. And then within our co-op, there's lots of people whose opinions we value and have different perspectives. And so we test it out with them. What would it be like if we did this? Do you think we can handle this at this point in time, or is that such a big distraction that we won't be doing what we're doing already and we won't be able to do this. And so I think that's probably what, what I need to work on the most is like how to do, do more of that and how to do a better job of that. And then, you know, the bigger the goal is, Jackie's not only talking to the board, talking to other co-ops, talking to staff, but she's talking to other constituencies who, wanna, who share this goal and are going to work on it. So that makes, you know, I don't know if it's a times complication or a plus complication, but it's going to make it uh, a lot more difficult. So that's, that's one thing, just what process do we use to, to sort of frame up that big thing? Because when we get that transformational goal, like when Jackie says that, everybody likes, you know, I'm writing on my paper or something. Everybody looks up and says like, wow, you know, that's, that's really what it's all about. So, but if it's too big a goal, and we can't do it, you know, so how do we weigh that? And I think the second thing is just uh, kind of following up what Steve was saying, within our organization, you know, how do we get alignment? How do we get on the same page? And I like to sort of preface everything we do by we need to get better. You know, so whether it's the national sales context or just the stuff we mess up on a day today basis, there's plenty of opportunities to get better. And I, I, I think that's just a, sort of a given in, in the kind of business we're in. You know, we deal with thousands of customers a day, and some of them we delight, some of them we probably don't delight, and so there's always an opportunity. It doesn't mean we're bad or we're worse than anyone else. It just means there's lots of opportunities um, to get better. Another thing I think is very helpful, and, and we all spend a lot of times in meetings like this when it's a this, we should do this or that. So the first person says we should do this, and the second person says we should do that, and the third person sort of decides if it's this or that. But there's always that opportunity. You can weigh in, certainly, but at some point it stops making sense to weigh in, and I think that's when it becomes our job to kind of step back and say, is there a way to do this and that? Can we reframe the question? Or is there a C 
that A or B really isn't what we should be talking about. And I think that's the kind of thing where, as board members, we all have a, an opportunity to do that uh, quite a bit. You know, I think just as a manager or a worker, you know, there's always those, those opportunities. And some of it is like, who's going to be the bigger person? You know, and, and, and we all have that opportunity to be, be the bigger person. Or we just say, yeah, you're right. I messed that up. You know, I like to say that a lot because we mess up so much stuff. So I think it's a good opportunity to say that. But I think it's, it's also an opportunity because what's, what happens often is when this person's saying this and this person's saying this, they're both right because it was caused by something that we should have been doing already. We should have had a system for that. We could have anticipated that. And that, that kind of falls back to me because who else should be trying to think about those things. Some of us have the privilege of sort of thinking outside of, you know, sort of jurisdictional uh, boundaries. And I think another thing that's kind of a corollary of that is whose job is it to avoid the train wreck? You know, because most train wrecks that, that happen to us, they're very foreseeable. And a lot of times we don't see it's our role as the person who can, and some of it's like a simple thing like, you see something on the agenda, you know that it's not, the conversation is not going to be clear, and that we might waste a lot of time on it and not get to any resolution. So either you can say it's not my job to be concerned with that, or you can say it is my job to be concerned with that, and I'm going to try and talk to that person before the meeting or make sure the committee's actually done, you know, done their report or something like that. And so I think that's part of leadership is just um, saying that. And then I think the third category, which we didn't really get to today, but we're all alluding to in our tables, is kind of like, what does the sort of democratic aspect of the co-op mean? How are particip people participating in the new normal? And I think that's probably the biggest nut we have yet to crack. And I think the, the way that I've come to look at it is make it easy and make it fun. And when we do that, we can find lots of ways that people want to participate. Um, you know, like we're raising money right now for a hunger initiative, and we'll raise like thirty or forty thousand dollars in two weeks because we really have it dialed in to it's super simple. It's as simple to do that as it is to like buy a piece of gum as you were checking out of a, you know, a Kroger or something like that. It's like so easy to do, so lots of people, you know, lots of people can do it. Or, you know, like when we, we do, we have something we call small games, a lot of co-ops do, just trying to take whatever it is that we're doing and turn it into a little, you know, can we do more than we did last year? So we had this thing about, can we sell a ton of strawberries in a week? You know, and the first year we did it, we didn't do it the second year. We sold a ton and three quarters. I'd kind of forgotten that we had had this game, but everybody else remembered it. And they were like super psyched out about the ton and three quarters of, uh, of uh, strawberries. So I think there's all kinds of things uh, th that we can do. There's also the kind of thing about making it easier to participate than not participate. You know, we went from 20% participation in the retirement plan to 80% participation in the retirement plan just by making it an opt-out. You know, you know, we didn't really know that, but that's nationally, that's proven. Everybody that does that has that result. So how can we make it? And you have to opt out of participating in this, you know, whatever initiative or whatever it is. So fabulous job by Jackie and Steve. And I think that, you know, from a manager's perspective, we plug right into that.